Soloing strategies for the wheel. Okay, first things first, the main riff is C, G, D, C. Basically a big dreamy jam over a big C9 sound. You know, we've got C or C major. All right, so you don't wanna play B flats over this. You wanna be thinking C major and C major pentatonic. And therefore, all these, all those open strings are great to hear, okay? And we'll be using a bunch of them. And Garcia did the original take on a uh, pedal steel. So, so I'm, I'm stealing a couple of the licks off of the, uh, the original recording of this where he's playing on a pedal steel. The first of which goes something like this. Uh, pinky bars here at the C note and the G note at the 8th fret B and G string, uh, B and E string rather. All right, and we're gonna go and play the nine of the C chord, the D note with our ring finger, and we're gonna pluck all three of them and give it a little dead, a uh, little ghost note. Then pluck it again and bend up from the two of the chord into the third, so bend the D up to the E note here. So that's all three notes are sustaining, okay? But the idea is to be emulating the pedal steel. Rest a second, and then we come to this position where the ring finger um, takes the bottom half of that bar. We were playing with the pinky, and we're gonna bend the B string up two frets here from this G note up to A, making a C6 sound. And we're gonna do the same kind of little that little dead sound. And remember, we're on the back pickup of a Strat with a lot of reverb. That's the idea, is that the sound is kind of plinky, but it has a cavernous amount of... So you can play some percussive. Okay, and we're gonna go... And bend up into the six, and while we're up there, we're gonna bring it down with another stroke. So that's gonna go. And then we come right back to our first positioning, bend and then pick. So we end up kind of undoing the first leg, which was this one is okay. So in all we go. little bit. Now I jump up with my index finger. You can always do it with your ring finger. I, I do position shifts more often than not with my index finger. So that's... So we do the quick bend from the D to the E. And then you want to make sure they're very staccato. By doing all upstrokes, that generally ensures that for me, as opposed to, okay, whoop, clamors. Then I jump, that's 3-1 of the C chord, that's E, C at the uh, 12th and 13th fret. Quick position shift right back to here, pinky goes where the middle finger was, and then we bend up. Okay, that's going to be coming up into a partial F chord. that lick, okay? Okay. Uh, so that's just like our first time where we were doing this to uh, this lick. We're going to be doing the same thing, but here starting on the G, bending up into the A note, okay? That's the five into the six of the C chord. Then down again to the five. Four, three, okay, keep the bar together. You can do it like that. Or do it like that. The real trick 
because this chord is going to be different for a lot of guys. I don't think most folks play this too often. This is a C9. And then we're going to hit the open B string. Okay. Hammer on to the G with our middle finger. Okay. And then hit the open E string. So that's the third of the C chord. So we get it, we hear a little bit of a major seven tonality for just a second. And then we hammer on. So it jumps uh, registers. little breath all right my solo may have been kind of compressed in, in the take that I did just so that I don't take too long and uh, but you might want to give more space between these phrases here's another idea that I, I like a lot over this is starting again we're gonna play a B major uh, sorry a, a C major scale starting on the, the G note here at the uh, 15th fret okay all right we're basically just gonna climb right up of the notes, but how we access them is what makes this kind of uh, creative approach. We're going to take the note before the C and bend it, okay? Right? Not... So we're going to make it sound like we've got the one fret knee lever on a pedal steel. Then we're going to come again to the same trick. bend up and down on both the A and the D string depending on you know if I if I do it I do it if I don't I, I just figure it out but usually that's kind of risky because you can get off the uh, board very quickly you get that awful sound but what you don't want to do is past bend past the C so be careful now that's our first two fret bend from that A to the B so Slight position shift. Index comes off the 12th fret and comes up to the 13th when we go to the B. The right hand is dead simple here, okay? All right, I'm just kind of stroking right through and letting the hammer on and the bend handle the rest of it. be afraid to, you know, let that last one weep a little bit. Okay, and I'm just bending up from the two into the three again until the rhythm kind of feels right, okay? But the real trick is this little bendy thing where you're going. So you're bending from the B to the C, from the E to the F, on the D string, okay? From the B to from the A to the B. That's a two fretter. Position shift, C. That's C, D, and then bend up to the E. Grab the F right here. And fake everybody out by sliding and then bending. Now we're up to the B, and now we got one fret more to cover. Unfortunately, we kept the pinky in reserve. Okay. There's all kinds of cool stuff in there. Okay, but this is a this is a fun little idea of backdooring your way into the tonic, the fourth, the major seven, the, the third of the, the C chord. Okay, and at that point I'm just kind of improvising. Uh, then I go to this last little idea, which is this very sweet sounding waterfall idea. Okay, so what we're doing is we're taking a major and minor seconds played on the B and E strings. 
And we're going to do, that's two frets or one, no, it's two and one fret apart for anybody that's not like, you know, stupid geeky stuff. Okay, so that's gonna be this shape, okay? Then we come back and play that shape. Then come back and play that shape. So we're playing G to F, then F to E, then E to D, then D to C, then C to B, and then B to A. And then we hit the B again and bend one fret. I highly recommend you have your thumb over. If you're behind the nut guy, that might be harder. I can't do that reliably like that. Um, so, the way you get the best sound from, to me is not by fretting both of these. Don't try to hold them both down. Just pin, pin the pinky, okay? So the pinky's gonna slide. The index can lift off after you hit it. Okay? That's the idea. Okay, so how does how does that work? Again, we're going with the index finger, okay, and we're starting this the same descending down the C major scale. Okay, with the pinky. Now, let's make the pinky legato and the, the staccato come out of the... Uh, you can try to do it both ways. It's just really hard to bring both of them down, press down. And it also can get a little, a little, I don't know, noisy. You know, this, this is already a reverberant sound and we've got one thing sustaining through, okay? Okay, so we let's assume you've made it down to Okay. Now we're bent up into that C with our index finger and we're gonna go. So we're basically just coming down the C major scale. Right? But instead of playing the E there or here, we're gonna go. And by hitting the open E string, it's gonna give us time to get down here to continue our uh, minor and major uh, seconds reign of terror lick. Okay, so how does that work? Bending, release. So that sounds kind of like a pedal steely sound, but the rest of it really isn't. So now we're playing the A and the G on the B string. So that's 10th fret and 8th fret. Open E string. 3rd fret D string with the E string still ringing underneath it. Now we're gonna... Okay. We're gonna keep adding more notes here, okay? So E, D, C. There's that C9 sound. Okay, so... Major seven, right? There's the B. So we're gonna fret the, the C note here and then quickly hit the open B string. But right now we've got a little bit of the E still ringing and the B very quite, quite proud, okay? Now we just hit a B note, so we're looking for an A note next. So we hit the A note on the D string. Sorry, that was totally wrong. Uh, a note on the D string right here. And then we let the G string ring open. So now all together we get. Now after G would come F. We're going to play that there with the G string ringing underneath it. And we're going to play the E note. which affords us the ability to do our, uh, yet another position shift, so. Okay, so it's kind of strange, you're moving up the neck, but the, 
you're going down in pitch. We get to the D. Okay. Uh, right, we go F, E, open D, open A, B, G, and on the downbeat we land with our pinky on the. I just placed the melody. So. And last but not least, uh, I you got to play the little lick that Garcia's been playing for the last well, for the last twenty years of his life. He didn't play the song really uh, on pedal steel live. So when he played uh, with the band, he would do one of these kind of. Uh, this kind of thing, right? Um, and that would be the cue to everybody in the band, like, hey, jam time's over, let's, uh, let's go to the singing part of the song. So that's... The wheel is turning, you can't slow down, right? So we come up the C major scale in thirds. But that's kind of boring, and I wanted to stick with the idea of, uh, of using the open strings, so I crafted this one for myself. <laughs> Same notes, but it sounds a lot different, right? So the way you play that is open D string. And that C is the downbeat. Okay, and then we're going to pedal back forth. to G. That's on the D string, the slide, then we play the C note here. Open E string. Okay, so the two notes are ringing at the same time. Hit the D note again, slide up to F. Hit the E note again. hit the E note again. So we shift from this F to up to here after in between E note, E strings, okay? So this is kind of hip in that just like we had all three here, we got, okay, so. So we're going to play the G note with our index finger at the 8th fret. So right now we're playing kind of a uh, very suspended sounding C chord here, okay? So if we go open E, G, and F, then back up. I think I do that. So hammer on, slide up, bend, and bend up into the C note of the, uh, you know, right there on the B, okay? From B to C at the 12th fret, okay? So... And I just do the, the traditional... that, and then pinky comes down and hits the E, and I let it fall. And right as it's about to fall all the way down, I come up here and grab this little nugget. Okay, and that's the E and the G note at the 12th fret. 
bend the E one fret, bend the G two frets. Focus on the high E string to get the accurate first, okay? The, the G string usually falls in line once the high E is bent. Okay, and you can always put your index finger down for a little extra support. Then come down here to the seventh fret, same fingering, and do the same trick. And bend again, one fret here, two frets on the G. Okay, I'm doing this with tens. It's much easier with nines. Don't try it with elevens, <laughs> is my suggestion, okay? So, all in, it's... So that's, you know, 20 minutes of your life to have a little lesson from me on uh, how to play over the wheel. I hope you guys can take something away from this lesson, even if you're not a deadhead. Um, I think there's some valuable, you know, little licks in there. So if you, uh, if you like what you see in here, please subscribe to the channel and, uh, you know, let me know what I can, you know, what lessons you want to see. All right. So take care of yourselves and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.